many names, uh, I have many performer names. Here with the Sideshow, I'm Vladimir Antonio, but my current performer name is Xander Lovecraft. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I'm here for my second ever Art Outside, and it's considerably better than last year. No, no rain yet, knock on wood. But um, it's very, it's very wonderful atmosphere. I'm enjoying it. We got awesome marching bands playing. We got uh, the Museum of Monstrosities right over here. We're giving tours out. It's really a, a fun weekend so far. Hopefully, it stays that way. found ourselves with a freak show and not really knowing what to do. How many years has this been going on? This is our seventh year performing together. What do you want people to take away when they watch uh, Nine Nine Eyes? Well, the, we would like to shatter the preconceptions of beauty to help people understand the difference between using a word like freak or a word like disabled or deformed or malformed to question the reality and parameters of what is normal and to honor and celebrate the strange and bizarre. Now, sword swallowing is considered to be one of the most dangerous activities a human being can possibly engage in. What I'm about to do for you folks, at least, twice as dangerous as normal sword swallowing. I will swallow this 15-inch stainless steel blade, then take a bow, bending at the hip, doubling my body over. Now, the reason that it makes it twice as dangerous is, my posture is all incorrect, or if I lean to the right or left, it will change the trajectory of the blade, either up or down or right or left. Something when you're swallowing swords, you do not want. I'll be risking rupturing my esophagus, also puncturing my stomach. Both these injuries do become fatal within minutes. So, twice as dangerous. Thank you. Now a 15-inch blade is 
the shortest sword you can swallow and still be a uh, respectable sword swallower. What is respect? Yeah. We will move on to the 20 inch blade that reaches into the very pit of my stomach. Now let me explain to you guys how this is going to go down. This will go into my mouth, down my throat, through my esophagus, between my lungs, behind my heart, finally coming across the very bottom of my stomach. Now there really isn't much more to say about this besides down the hatch without a scratch. Into the stainless steel down the hatch. Well, I, I started doing performing. I started performing about two and a half years ago. Uh, I, I was friends with a lot of the people in St. Louis's burlesque and performance community, and uh, they introduced me. To, uh, they introduced me to the, like, the rest of the group, and they're like, "We have this idea for a sort of like an old-timey revival medicine show. We're going to feature elements of burlesque, belly dance, and we're going to have a band playing with it." And, and I'm like, "Absolutely! This it sounds like it's going to be fantastic." So signed on. We did two shows. We did one in St. Louis, and then we went across state. Kansas City, uh, my second home now, and uh, we had an awesome show there, and it was like this realization we I had that night at, at the Kansas City gig, it was about 2 in the morning, we're hanging out in this uh, performer's loft space afterwards, I'm sitting around this, this table, a lot of my friends are kind of passed out, but I'm sitting there with the band leader, I'm like, this has been such an amazing fucking night, I want to have nights like this for the rest of my life, and I perform with uh, a vaudeville troupe in Kansas City, I perform with 999 Eyes. I'm with um, the Baker's Carnival. Just this past summer, I went to Scotland to work in the Edinburgh Fringe Festival with uh, the uh, creator of the London Burlesque Festival. He started a show there, and uh, I became an international performer for the first time in my life, and hopefully I get to go back, maybe go to London next year. I've, I've got big aspirations, big dreams. Uh, I, I, how do you feel if... Uh, did, did people ever say that what you do is exploitive, or, I mean... Um, People know that, well, I, I like to use a quote from uh, the Blues Brothers. I've been exploited all my life. I mean, uh, I, I, I walk out the street and I'm exploiting myself just being out there. I, uh, I haven't gotten it as much, thankfully, because like people understand I love this. This is everyone who I, uh, all my friends know that I've been, I'm the youngest of three kids already in my family. I'm starved for attention. So it only made sense to, for me to go onto the stage and express outward and be uh, be an artistic creature of the world. And um, my family is finally gum uh, accepting it. My mother, bless her heart, last year when I came to Austin for the first time, I was gone for a month and she was uh, just a big bundle of nerves. The moment I couldn't get a hold of her, she was worried. But uh, ever since the Scotland trip, she's been so mellowed out. My father, the, my, the man who actually was like, dude, go out there. You know, see the world, do your follow your dreams is now in my mother's role. She's not. He's now the word. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, my, they've switched roles, and he's now the worry warden. She's the go out there, follow your dreams. So hopefully they'll both, you know, be a, a little bit happier for me soon. But uh, I'm just out following my dreams. I'm enjoying every moment of it. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not quitting anytime soon. I, do, I was noticing some of the acts, like uh, the Black Scorpion, are kind oh. of telling jokes about the conditions and what their lives are like. Do you yeah. think that this kind of thing can shed positive light on this? Um, that? It shows that, you know, uh, Black Scorpion and I were obviously born with our deficiencies, or deficiencies, whatever. But um, over time, like, we've grown to be able to laugh at ourselves. Like, I used to... About three years ago, I would never think of doing a, a sideshow because I was very uh, I was very guarded. I'm like, I don't know. I'm not going to put myself out there. But, like, I finally had that epiphany. I'm like, I'll put myself out there, I'll entertain people, and I'll make money for it. Pretty much, it's it's the perfect job for me. Don't get to work that much. I get to be out here in beautiful Texas countryside with all these beautiful stinking hippies. <laughs> no offense. No, oh, no, no <laughs> taken, no taken. And uh, you know, get to uh, share my art, and my love with them. I'm sharing myself with them. That sounds a little weird now, but. <laughs> 
it's it's what I want to do. So I couldn't be happy. Great, thank you. Thank you. One, two. You guys are gonna let me just do that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. You see, if you draw a line from here to here, and from ear to ear, you get the middle right about here. Tight fit today. <laughs> oh, I almost sneezed. I would have nailed you right there. I would have nailed you. I would have nailed you. So now the idea is to take this out. Collapse or telescope. But to tell the truth, eh, I'm kind of bored with this act. I've done a lot. Bored, hammer, nail. <laughs> so I thought I'd come up with something a little bit more dangerous. I think you really felt that one. Thank you very much. I felt it too. From all the stories I've learned, um, all the freaks were fabulous. They were traveling the world. They were making money in the time of the Depression. They were working when other people were stuck in coal mines. They were working at circus sideshow grounds. Um, you have your exception with the Elephant Man because he was so deformed that none of the freak shows wanted him, so he got in the hands of kind of a demented person. But really, unfortunately, he's kind of been the model, and ultimately, um, yeah, I mean, all entertainment is exploitative. So, yeah, we're all exploiting ourselves when we get up on a stage for the audience. Yeah. Right. Our show is owned by freaks. Uh, the freaks are the ones who decided to reclaim the word and are tired of being called deformed, malformed, abnormal, etc. Uh, my name is Ken uh, uh, Pit Pitman or Peg Leg. Go by that. Or stage on Peg of the Lego. Pego over Lego, I love that. Pego the Lego, yeah. Pego the Lego. So how long have you been performing with this show or other shows like it? I started out doing uh, like a wild man thing in, a, in like a uh, surf punk band back in the late 90s. That's where, that's where I got the name at, Pego the Lego. And uh, then graduated to this back in 2005. So I've been around it ever since the first show. Now you're on stage, you're talking about the condition you have. What was it, neuro? Neurofibromatosis. Do you feel like your performance, you're able to shed some light on your condition oh, and what yes, your life is? Oh yes, I do. How, oh, yeah. And how? I mean, have you had people talk to you about it afterwards? You feel like it, it opens people up a bit? Or? Oh yeah, oh yeah. One of the things is uh, one of the shows we did. Uh, uh, some guy who was always embarrassed by his mom because his mom had it. And uh, I guess I opened up his heart, you know, because uh, he came back from that tonight and brought his mom with her, him and said, I, n I never looked at it that way until I met you, you know, and uh, you made me so proud of my mom. Where it made me feel real good. That must have felt really yeah. good. Yeah, but, you know, like, uh, I had talked about a lot about this. Uh, People think I have warts, you know, to, uh, you know, like I said, it's um, contagious, you know, and it's like, uh, it's getting through some people's minds that are so uh, uh, close and all that, they don't know what's happening in their life. Alright, well thanks for talking to me, Ken. Uh